Hi, I'm Jonathan Stars. I would say that nothing made my recordings sound more professional than when I learned how to use a compressor. It evens out the dynamics of the material so you can position, say, a vocal in a mix where it can be more easily heard. It's also often used to give bass and guitar more sustain. In this video, we'll look at the basics of using a compressor limiter. We'll also look at using the sidechain feature. Now, back when I started recording, you had to spend at least a couple hundred dollars to buy a low-end hardware compressor limiter. These days, people have a terrific advantage in that a compressor plug-in comes with just about every flavor of digital workstation out there. And for the same few hundred I spent, you can get a world-class plug-in. If you've never worked with one before, I highly re recommend you give it a try. Now, as enthusiastic as I am about the great tool, it's possible, in fact, easy to overdo it. I've heard a lot recently about engineers squashing a life out of final mixes so they'll sound loud when compared with other songs on the radio. As an example of overdoing it, I want you to notice in the next segment of this video that I've gone a bit too far compressing my voice. Listen and learn. Here we go. Okay, what I've done here is I've inserted a uh, compressor um, on the one track that I'm speaking on right now. And I've used uh, the vocal leveler, which is one of the presets here. And you can see here that it's set to the ratio is 3 to 1. That means uh, for every three decibels uh, louder I get here above the threshold um, it only gets one decibel louder on the output and uh, one of the things you you can see the meter over here you go well gosh if the if this is the threshold and by the way that's where that is and you can grab it and move it this way rather than using the uh, knob over here um, and back I'm going to switch back to its normal setting um, you say, well, why is this one, uh, you know, louder? It should be quieter. Well, what's happening is over here on the gain side, uh, this, this controls the output. So if I back the output down, of course, my voice gets quieter, but you'll notice that these things move uh, in tandem. Once it hits here, you'll see as this gets three louder, the output only gets one louder. And then if we bring this back to, I'm going to hit the compare button, we bring it back to it, the compensation by the gain. Uh, once again, they kind of match so that you get just about the same kind of output that you would be getting uh, from hearing it here. It's sort of a makeup gain, shall we say. And you can see the threshold. You can determine where that is before it starts squashing the output. And if we drag it way down here, uh, my voice starts being squashed quite considerably here and I can do another makeup gain so that we bring it up to a level that's uh, approximately listenable there and there we go again but now you can hear the voice is quite a bit more squashed um, so that that gives you some idea of those basic controls the knee um, determines how quickly uh, after it hits the threshold that the that the effect takes place and I'm going to back this off so that you can see um, there's a sharp knee here, and, uh, but, but in general, I'm going to go back to compare so that we hear the original, um, sort of a gentle uh, approach to the compression uh, gives it a more, a more natural effect, shall we say. And uh, let's see, the, n the other part is the attack, and that determines how quickly the thing kicks in when it hits a peak. Um, Normally, I just leave them set pretty much the way they are, but you can use them with various other, uh, other settings to get different kinds of effects. Um, generally, a, a little bit slower attack, uh, like you see 14 milliseconds, is almost uh, inaudible, but it doesn't kick in so quickly that, uh, that again, that it, it sounds like it's, uh, it lets a few of the transients through. So a little bit of the peaks sneak through, and uh, uh, then the squashing starts to take place. And uh, that's to give you some idea there. By the way, one of the things I really, really like about having this uh, software plug-in version is that we've got the graph here. We've got these meters here. These are things that I didn't really have on my uh, hardware version. Uh, and, and it just 
gives me so much better idea about what's going on. Now, the next part that we're going to look at, though, is um, using a compressor as a limiter. And I'm going to switch over to the uh, limiter over here. And I'm using a brick wall limiter. And the idea here is that you can see that uh, it goes right up just like normal volume, uh, normal sound. And you notice that the level, uh, the threshold being set very high, um, that it's really not doing anything until I hit, uh, until I hit that threshold. And I'm actually going to shout here for a second. I want you to watch the meter here. One, one. Now they go straight up again because I've got my gain set here. But hey, uh, I'm on bypass. That's the problem <laughs> right there. Uh, you can see the meters moving again. If I set the gain down here, uh, you won't hear any difference until I hit that threshold and I go, hey, and then you could see a little burst over here, hey, uh, as it actually kicks in. I'm going to go back and set it to its normal setting. And uh, so anyway, that that's really to protect against the peaks going through. And of course, this is set now to 50 I think it's microseconds, not rather than milliseconds. Yeah, here we go. Microseconds, very, very low setting, um, so that it prevents even the the uh, quickest uh, little peaks from going through. And um, uh, let's see. So, so anyway, th th this setting is to prevent the the peaks from popping through, and then we can use the compressor on on everything on the other side. So that gives you some idea of the setting there. In our final example here, I'm using um, a plug-in, uh, a compressor as a, as a side chain. Um, that's this section over here. And what I'm doing, actually, I'm taking the audio from my voice that, that's talking right now. I'm sending it out a bus, uh, bus 12. And then I'm coming in um, onto another track here. Um, which has audio, it ha you know, just has some music in the background, which we'll hear in just a minute. And uh, by bringing, and this is the compressor that's, that, that, that is set up for this. And I've taken the factory default and uh, twiddled with some of the things uh, so that, uh, you know, so that it better suits this purpose. But what I've done is I've used uh, the key over on this side for the uh, to to listen what it's going to do is listen to bus 12 and then it's going to back things down based on what happens on bus 12 and you can see it's already responding as though um, you know there was some kind of audio input and it's being controlled by my voice uh, of course it's not affecting the track because there's no track playing at this time uh, but at the same time you set up the bus you have to set this you also say uh, make a choice here to turn this key on, which means respond as though it's a side chain, because if that's turned off, it doesn't have any effect whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the music playing. Um, oh, yes, and by the way, when you send your bus out, make sure you uh, turn the, uh, you know, run the slider on a little bit here, uh, otherwise you get no input. So I'm going to go ahead and tell the audio to start playing. And there's the music. And notice when I talk now, it backs down the music. But when I stop talking, the music comes back up again. And there you have it. That's, the, that's how this thing works. And uh, in this case, I'm setting a, a thresholds and attack and release that seem to suit. Now, this kicks back in very quickly. Uh, you may actually choose to have a slower release time so that it it eases its way back up rather than having the music punch back in the way it's doing right now. Another thing that you can do while you're working with this, if you need to hear what the side chain is, the, the control track is, which in this case is my voice, if I just kick this on, that's all you can hear. You can actually have the audio turned off for the, the bus track, but then you're just listening to it. But anyway, there you go. That's how that thing works. We'll just let this play out a little bit there. And fade. Well, I hope that's given you enough to get you started. You really need to give this a try. It's a fantastic tool. And once you get used to it, you'll never go back. See you next time.